Good morning and a lovely Sunday for each one of you. And here we broadcast our message from Queensland. We trust that each one of you have been having an excellent time in the Lord <coughs> in this lockdown. We praise God that uh, you continue to spend time with the Lord and uh, grow in the Lord. Remember that all things are being organized by our Father God to establish His kingdom. And nothing that is happening on this earth is by accident in the Lord. He is in perfect control of all that is happening. During this time of uh, lockdown, I've been meditating and praying through some of the uh, various concepts and things that we've been doing. And in examining the simple concept of the gospel that we preach, the gospel is a message of our Lord Jesus Christ. Gospel is good news. The good news of all our Lord Jesus Christ has done, and we proclaim what Jesus has done in redeeming this, uh, mankind from all the sins of the world with his precious blood and sacrifice, and how the world needs to know what Jesus Christ has done for us. And all that Jesus has promised to us in the salvation of mankind, as outlined in Paul's uh, book of Romans, in the simplicity and the glory of the gospel. As we present the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, and examine how we evangelicals and charismatics have been presenting the gospel, I realize that there is a big gap in presentation. <coughs> We believe that the only thing that we need to get across is the clarity of the message of what Jesus Christ has done. But in this modern world, we have um, realized that it is not just the product, but the presentation of the product that will help people to accept the goodness or the reality of a product, even a very good product. Let's say if they have a, a super, super vaccine or something that is so good for everyone, they need to know that it works. They need to know uh, how it's used and its side effects and all those things. Uh, even if it's a super food that someone comes up with that is so beneficial, provides all the nutrients, it's still presentation that helps people to accept that. I'm not talking about the presentation that comes from uh, human endeavor, human carnal thinking. I'm talking about how the gospel was always supposed to be presented. It was not supposed to be presented in words and concepts alone. Well, let's examine the Bible and renew our mind in thinking through these concepts. Let's look at 1 Corinthians chapter 2. If you have your Bible, turn with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 2. And these are what Paul says in verse um, 2 onwards, chapter 2. For I determine not to know anything among you except Jesus Christ and Him crucified. I was with you in weakness, in fear, and in much trembling. And my speech and my preaching were not with persuasive words of human wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power, that your faith should not be in the wisdom of man, but in the power of God. And the word power is the word dynamis as used in Acts chapter 1, verse 8. Now here Paul says that when he was with the Corinthians, he has all the normal human feelings of uh, inadequacy, weakness, fear, trembling, and all that most people feel when uh, they are supposed to give a public speech. And then he also says, it's not through the logical presentation and uh, persuasive words or oratory of human wisdom. The main thing that Paul speaks about is how the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, the message of our Lord Jesus Christ is presented with demonstrations 
of the Holy Spirit and a power, which means there was a presence of the Holy Spirit. There was power that flows. And it can flow in life, if you're right now live speaking and preaching. It can also flow through even video channels and internet channels too. As you reach out to God right now, we can expect that each time we present Jesus Christ for the Holy Spirit to demonstrate His presence and the presence of God and of Jesus, of the Kingdom of God. Now, we do not receive because we do not expect. Our faith was not placed there. Whatever we place our faith upon, that we can receive. If we place our faith only upon an excellent message or a concept presented in a way that we could not see it before, obviously that's all that we receive. We receive according to what our faith is. Like the woman with the issue of blood, when uh, she reached out to Jesus, before she reached out to Jesus, she really created a faith and expectation that the moment she touched him, she would receive her healing. And don't forget, she had tried healing in various methods and um, uh, doctors and physicians and the people of those days or whatever they had. And it did not get better, but it got only worse. So in Mark chapter 5, it says she said to herself, and she thought to herself that the moment she touched him, she will be healed. There was an expectation. In the same way, there was also many other people thronging and touching him, but they don't have the expectation. They don't have faith. All they had was see a famous person called Jesus passing by, and they just want to be near him. But this woman's touch was different for when she touched Jesus, even the hem of his garment. Jesus felt power flowing. You believe in the power of the Holy Spirit, you receive the power of the Holy Spirit, and you know that the power of the Holy Spirit is real. So here Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, that the gospel or the presentation of our Lord Jesus Christ among us and Him crucified, what He has done for us on the cross and His resurrection, is to present, be presented not with persuasive words. And it was to be presented in demonstration of the reality and the presence and power of the Holy Spirit. The word demonstration here is from the word apodesis. Apodesis means to make manifest, to show forth a demonstration or proof. So he's saying that every time he presents the gospel, he presents proof of the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ in his resurrection power. And he says in verse 4 and 5, let's read that again. And my speech and my preaching were not with persuasive words of human wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power, that your faith should not be in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Say, if you begin the gospel this way, and you receive the gospel in this manner, then you realize that every time Jesus is preached, every time Jesus is mentioned, every time the name of Jesus is called upon, that you can expect a power and manifestation of His presence. Just as you can expect that each time you hear the preaching of the Word, that you can receive the demonstration of His power and of His Spirit. If you're weak, you can be strengthened. If you're sick, you can receive healing. If you're oppressed, you can receive deliverance. Even as you hear the word about our Lord Jesus Christ and the word of our Lord Jesus Christ. 
that is the level of the Bible standard of preaching the gospel and of uh, conveying the gospel each time they meet they expect a miracle each time they hear the word they expect a demonstration of the reality and the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ so our modern churches has set the bar too low both among the preacher and the receiver of the message the receiver of the message only came to hear a good sermon or some sort of message and that's all they wanted they come sick and they go away sick they come oppressed and they go away oppressed they come with uh, all problems and and they did not see god uh, hear their cries or hear their prayers they have such low expectation that every time they hear a sermon, their only expectation is I want to hear something that tingle in my mind, a message or concept. And so their expectation is low and that's all that they receive. On the other side is the preacher. Many new preachers and I know Bible students and all that are not experienced in preaching and even new preachers. All they want to convey is, let me get a sermon, let me get a sermon, let me get a sermon out. Oh, yes, I got a good sermon. Yes, I got a good message. The expectation is only to deliver a good sermon or a good message. They did not expect that God will show up. And Paul, every time he preached, he expected that Jesus invisibly and God himself will show up through the power of the Holy Spirit. So the preacher's expectation is also low. And look at what's happened in this end time to our churches today. We are so compromised. I don't know whether, you know, we are 1% or 0.1% or even 10% of the gospel that Jesus Christ wanted to be presented in. It's, it looks like, you know, we have a chocolate cake and uh, we are giving it as a present and we strip it of the chocolate and we strip it of its uh, uh, of shape of a cake. And uh, we strip it of its cream. We strip it of its flavor. And all we have is this, this goo. Is it? That's a chocolate cake. The gospel of Jesus Christ was supposed to be wholesome. Presented with the reality and presence of God. Where we expect God to show up. Just as I expect God to show up. <coughs> as I speak these words and present it the way it is. And I expect that as you hear the message of God, that the message of God will go into your heart and tell you that God is real. You can receive from God right now the expectation that is there, both from the receiver of the message and the preacher. We are lower our standards so low that that's all we receive. Of course, that's still better than others who are even lower, who just expect to go to church and fulfill their obligation. They're not even listening to the message and they just, they are hung on the church. Ah, that's it. Ah, uh, I can go and do whatever I want now. Or the preacher, you know, who just quotes some sermon or some sayings and say, ah, I've done my job. I've spoken a few words, uh, no, a few points. Now I finished my job. You have not finished your job. Is supposed to pray unto the presence of God accompany you and go for wherever you speak the message of our Lord. That is the standard of ones. So I'm not sure where or what measurement we are. We could be below 10%, below 1%, below 0.01% compared to how God wants us to present His word and message. Let us realize this. That as it is the existence of the very churches and the level of the existence of the churches is so far from where God wants us to be. Even in the seven thunders message that was inaugurated in this end time, we hear that message that says everything stinks. There's so much thing in the church. And in a lot of the prophecy we received since then, 
and also from other prophets like you know, Dimitri uh, uh, Duduman. He says, people are only looking after themselves. And then I remember the uh, Lord speaking to Dumitri and say, the, uh, the, pe- the, 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 the church is only you know, looking to glorify themselves and looking after themselves. No one is looking after the Lord's business or caring whether we are really bringing forth Jesus in all his fullness to the world and giving our lives to Jesus. So too many people have their own agenda, too many people looking up to themselves, too many are glorifying themselves, and God, our Lord Jesus Christ, is not glorified. We need to repent and understand that Jesus wants to show the world the reality of his presence, the reality of what he has done. We're supposed to bring it forth in a power and demonstration of the Spirit. Those receiving, those presenting. And then we will receive all that God wants. A theology has to be developed by more than one scriptures. This is one scripture. Let's look at more scriptures and show forth that in the Bible days of the New Testament, this was their expectation that the gospel is to be presented with power and demonstration of the Spirit and not just by words, even the persuasive words of human wisdom. In the book of First Thessalonians, chapter 1, we see Paul writing to them, that's not like chapter 1. Let's get this through. Yes. Paul says these words to them. And you know, the Thessalonian church, there was persecution from the Jews when Paul went to the city of Thessalonica. And he has to leave uh, uh, quite soon after he went to that city. So here we have it in chapter 1 of 1 Thessalonians. He says in verse uh, 2 onwards, <coughs> We thank you, Lord, we praise you. So looking at First Thessalonians chapter 1, it says here, for, in verse uh, 5 especially, for our gospel did not come to you in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit. And in much assurance, as you know what kind of man we were among you for your sake. This presentation by Paul to Thessalonians is telling them, when we were with you, when we preached the gospel to you, it was not just a message. It was not just in words that we use. He says it comes to you in power, in the Holy Spirit, and that part means in demonstration of the reality of the Holy Spirit, that Jesus, God, Holy Spirit, were present to affirm, to confirm that the message spoken was true. Paul raise the standard or actually that was the standard of the preaching the gospel all the time this is a second verse in any theology it is established by two three verses and even more the merrier the better the most solid the theology and what theology are we bringing forth the theology that the gospel was never supposed to be presented just in words and concepts of men. Although these words and concepts are good, beautiful, elegant, lovely, and it is the truth, the truth was supposed to be presented in power. And the expectation must be that, that if it is the truth, it will have a release of energy that comes from God himself and it will be actually demonstrated and confirmed by the presence of God himself such that sicknesses will flee 
demons will flee, oppression will be will be cancelled and the, and people freed from all those things. And they expect the reality to take place. This was the gospel according to the Bible without compromise. The message can be simple, elegant and full of truth. But it's this demonstration of the power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit to open blind eyes to raise the dead, to heal all manner of sickness and disease. This is the expectation and the standard by which we were born and which we have received from the Lord. Unfortunately, we in our modern times receive the gospel without power. We receive it in word and of course we make a decision to accept it, which is good. But there is a level in which we were never open to. We never, although most of, some of us might have, I mean you could have received the gospel in a demonstrative presentation by evangelists with power. But generally most of us receive the gospel just as a presented message and concept which we accept, we receive. And that's why we cannot give more because that's what we receive. We need to renew our mind, change our thinking to understand that although we were presented this level, as we study the word, it was supposed to be presented that level. And now we have to reach that level and present it at that level of which the gospel must always be preached in science and wonders. Of course, humans today present it in very creative ways. We present the gospel in music. We present the gospel in a play, in an act, you know, in all these matters. But nothing can receive the gospel. Uh, nothing can replace the gospel presented with great signs and wonders and power. That is the standard of the Bible. No compromise in these end times. So besides these words, we look at other verses in which uh, Paul presented himself. And so let's consider here in uh, 2 Corinthians. And um, here Paul talks about um, uh, what he went through in his wrestling with uh, a fallen angel in all that he has paid a price to preach the gospel. And then he says in 2 Corinthians, chapter 12 verse 12 truly the signs of an apostle were accomplished among you with all perseverance in signs and wonders and mighty deeds so paul again says when he went forth as an apostle of our lord jesus christ he demonstrated his apostleship not just with words, not just uh, with um, presentation of what he has done uh, in terms of setting up churches, but he says they were accomplished among you with all perseverance, of course patience is necessary, perseverance, and he says in signs and wonders and mighty deeds, hallelujah, there's an expectation that miracles will occur wherever you present the gospel. Now think about that. We all have a concept of Jesus Christ, both even in a non-Christian world and here in the church world, that when Jesus Christ came, the main thing that he did besides his lovely message of love and truth from God, is that signs and wonders to place. You remove the signs and wonders and all that Jesus has, would have been is just a teacher and a philosopher. But it's the signs and wonders including his resurrection from the dead that set Jesus apart. The same with Moses. Take away all the signs and wonders and he'll be no different from a founder of a nation who was a great philosopher and an organizer. 
But you and I know that is the signs and wonders of Moses carry out through God's instruction with the rod of Moses. He parted the Red Sea. It demonstrated the power of God and the ten plagues in the land of uh, Egypt. It was a signs and wonders. The reality of God's power superseding and surpassing all the natural laws. Can we expect that our lives today in this end time will surpass and supersede all natural laws? We need to raise our faith to that because we are conditioned like, like lab rice in the uh, lab mice in the laboratory to just accept things as it is that we are subject and under the natural laws that today still exist and they exist in their form because of the fall and the sin of man in its present state that we cannot escape the physical laws we are so ground and trained like lab rats until we accept what is around us without realizing there is a power beyond the natural that can supersede, surpass all the natural laws around us that we classify as signs and wonders and miraculous things such that we need to we need to accept it first we need to believe it first then we can surpass these laws and we can not through our strength but as we exercise faith in the truth and this is the truth that the gospel of Jesus Christ and the life of those who receive the gospel of Jesus Christ are to continually surpass and supersede all natural laws because a higher law is at work the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus through the resurrection power and life of Jesus as we believe these things then are we able to flow forth into the fullness that God has for us. Well, that's three verses now that we have. Let's dig for more and understand that these are concepts that uh, are inherent in the very preaching to, of the gospel. Uh, what about the book of Romans? which is the Magna Carta of the Gospel. Well, turn to Romans chapter 1, verse 4. And Paul says here, and um, he says here, let's read from verse 3, Concerning his son Jesus Christ, our Lord, who was born of the seed of David, according to the flesh, and declared to be the Son of God, we power declared to be the son of God as he introduced this concept of the gospel with power according to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead so again here in the very foundations of uh, the book of Romans he says that Jesus Christ and the gospel of Jesus Christ was presented with power according to the spirit of holiness as the Holy Spirit by the resurrection of, from the dead gain this concept that the gospel must always be presented with power is inescapable how can you read the Bible especially New Testament and still believe that the gospel of Jesus Christ is just words that you speak to your to the person as words you speak to your neighbor, words you speak to people, and that's it. You didn't expect anything. I know you could write those words in a tray and say, Here, here's the gospel. The gospel must always be presented with power, signs and wonders, miracles that tell us this is indeed beyond the philosophy of man beyond just a new religion this is power that is inherent in the creation of the universe and in the sustenance of the universe and in the continuance of the changes that are brought to the universe 
we need to accept this concept. There's a four verses and there are much more that continue to be that. We see here, even in verse 16, we continue and says, Paul says in verse 16, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God. And there's the word dunamis again in both these. It's the dunamis of God to, to salvation for everyone who believes for the Jew first and also for the Greek. Now, may I remind you that salvation in the early concept of New Testament and in the Jewish understanding includes spirit, soul and body. For some reason, modern Christianity has re reduced our salvation to mean salvation of our spirit and soul after we die. The concept of salvation is that he save you from your sins he save you from your sicknesses he save you from your oppression he save you of course in eternity but the main thing here is power the gospel always must be presented in power there is no compromise in a new testament concept even though many of us were born again by the gospel presented just in word, we need to raise our standards and understanding that from thus forward, we must always present the gospel with signs and wonders and is to be expected by both the preacher and the recipients of the message. Only then will we raise the standard to what our Lord Jesus Christ desires in us. Thank you, Father. Well, as if this message uh, so far is insufficient, there's so much more that uh, we need to see uh, from the Bible. Look at Romans chapter 15. And Paul tells us in Romans chapter 15, Verse 13 first. Now, as he concludes the Magna Carta, the Gospel, as he understood it, he says in Romans 15, verse 13, Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. He expects the power of the Holy Spirit to continue working in their lives. And then in verse 18 and 19, right on the verse 20, and he talked about his work, his continued work in preaching the gospel. He says, For I will not dare to speak of any of those things which Christ has not accomplished through me in word and in deeds. Two things, not just in words, in deeds, in word and deed. And you know, Paul is an intelligent person with great arguments and logic and reasoning. He could present anything powerfully in words, but he says it's not just in words, in deeds. Let me see demonstrated the power of the gospel. When he he raised the dead, healed the sick. He says, in word and deed, to make the Gentiles obedient in mighty signs and wonders. Then he continued from uh, uh, verse um, 18 to verse 19. For I would not dare to speak of any of these things which Christ has not accomplished through me, word and deed, to make the Gentiles obedient. Verse 19. In mighty signs and wonders, hallelujah, by the power of the Holy Spirit, so that from Jerusalem, round about to Illyricum, I have fully preached the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so I have made it my aim to preach the gospel, not where Christ was named, 
lest I should build on another man's foundation, as it is written. To whom he was not announced, they shall see, and those who have not heard shall understand. See, Paul says he will continue to preach this gospel with signs and wonders non-stop until his last breath. This is his understanding. This is theology. And may I remind you, Paul was not among the first batch of disciples of Jesus. He only came to know Jesus after the church has been founded and he was a persecutor of the church and then when he came to know Jesus in the Damascus Road Paul somehow went away for three years and uh, re-adapt and re-understand uh, his theology and rearrange his theological understanding from the Bible that he knew which was only the Old Testament and he came back with his understanding that the gospel of Jesus Christ must be accompanied with signs and wonders and with power. We need to accept this. I know many of you are asking, yes, we want to, we want to, how? So before we go to the how, let us establish first that we have to, we must raise our faith to this level because this is the correct theology of what the gospel of Jesus Christ is. And unless we correct our incorrect theology understanding or watered down version of the gospel, eh, we won't rise, rise to the level God wants. So I'm presenting so many scriptures, in, irrefutable, that the gospel must always be in word and deed. Not just in word. May I remind you again again, not just in word. Every time you mention Jesus, even in your own home right now, or wherever you go, when you call on Jesus, let your faith rise to the fact that you expect a law of the Spirit that supersedes and surpasses your natural laws. That if you were sick, there's a natural law of uh, recovery healing, that you want to surpass that that in the, your prov provision and providence that you expect a higher law to work a, a law of signs and wonders when you raise your expectation to that level then and only then can you function like the New Testament people who expect God to show up wherever His name is mentioned wherever His word and gospel is preached our expectations have been too low and we are so sick to that low level that we don't realize we are sick. We need to recover from our sickness and realize that the normal, healthy Christian has the gospel preached with power to them and will preach the gospel with power in demonstration of the Holy Spirit. Signs and wonders. Let that be our default mode. Then you will see signs and wonders. Change your belief first then you will change the reality around you. You could be even like the woman with the issue of blood who try everything in the natural and does not work. But say to yourself from this day forward, the gospel that I believe, the Jesus that I believe is one who is risen from the dead, who will demonstrate His power in your life right now. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. So, so many verses we already have. As if this is insufficient, we continue on to show you it's all over the place in the Bible. And uh, <clears throat> as we <clears throat> look at here in the Bible, I've done also First Corinthians uh, chapter 1. We did First Corinthians chapter 2. He says, um, in verse uh, 24. Uh, in this first session, I just want to demonstrate that uh, the theology of the gospel, which must be accompanied with words, demonstration of the Spirit. We must have the theology clearly before we proceed forward. It says here, For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved. It is the power of God. That's First Corinthians chapter 1. And uh, it says, it is the power of God, verse 18. And um, 
9 and verse 24, same chapter. But to those who are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. Can you see that again? Demonstration and words. Words are important, but demonstration is also equally important. The gospel must always be with signs and wonders. No compromise there. And um, this demonstration of power is actually something that Jesus expects of us. When we examine the book of Acts, which is like the works of the apostles through the Holy Spirit, you see that Jesus intended that. See that Jesus intended that. That's the have this. In Acts chapter one, and that continue from the Gospel of Luke chapter twenty four, where Jesus says, "Tarry ye in Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high." He tells them that. So here says, as Jesus ascended on high, and he took them to the place where he was to be ascended in Acts chapter 1. And they were interested in the fulfillment of some prophecies about Israel becoming a kingdom and nation. He says in verse 7, It is not for you to know times or seasons which the Father has put in his own authority, because these things would be beyond their lifetime. He couldn't tell them that it's going to happen in 1948 onwards. It'd be too far for them. They're in the first century. It's going to happen 2,000 years later. So that's why he didn't tell them. He says, hey, it's not for you to know now because it's not time. Then he says in verse 8, but you shall receive power. Power, dunamis. When the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem, and in all Judea, and Samaria, and to the end of the earth. So Jesus saw to it that they received the most ingredient to the preaching of the gospel, that is his presence with them, his power that he delegated to them to go out. And they are to be witnesses of our Lord Jesus Christ in power. Not just in word. A witness can witness in word. Yes, I saw Jesus. Yes, this is, this is Jesus, uh, what he said. But they must be witness in power. The power must come forth and be expected. And that's the way Jesus also walked as we were examining this series. So there we have our Lord Jesus Christ. And then when you go forth, one of the first things that happen, uh, besides the signs and wonders, he says that, that uh, when they preach the gospel, even in Acts 2, it says in verse 43, then fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. Just as what Paul says in Corinthians 12, 12, the apostles must demonstrate signs and wonders, and not just great administrative skill, or great intellectual abilities, or great organizational skills. They must demonstrate signs and wonders. And of course, then chapter 3 talks about the, one of the first recorded detailed healing. And uh, so Peter tells them, it's not by our own power or godliness in Acts, 2, Acts 3 verse 12. But he says, and uh, this is done because of the name of Jesus and because Jesus is alive in verse 16, Acts 3. And his name. We are witnesses, he says in the words before, and his name, through faith in his name, has made this man strong, whom you see and know. Yes, the faith which comes through him has given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. It must be astounding to realize that Peter himself was just an ordinary fisherman just a few months ago, or a year or two before. And suddenly now, he can do miracles too. It must be astounding. I mean, imagine you folks out there. 
that people know you as you are, that you know that you are walking in your humility as a Christian, and suddenly you can raise the dead, you can you can bring healing to the sick around you, and bring healing to incurable sickness disease. What will happen? It's because of the Holy Spirit and power, because we know that God is with us, and there is the presence and power of God that goes with us and that is the difference that the New Testament gospel and church has that our modern churches does not have so we can change that by first having a solid theology and understanding that the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ must always be accompanied by signs and by wonders in our Lord. Praise the Lord. More verses. Hallelujah. And we see here um, <clears throat> and uh, this things in Acts 433 to confirm what we say the gospel must go forth with signs and wonders. He says now the multitude of those who believe were one soul and one, one heart, one soul. Neither did anyone say that any of the things he possessed was his own, but they had all things in common. And with great power, the apostles gave witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ and great grace was upon them. Look at this word again. They bear witness. They say, yes, we know Jesus. Yes, we have seen Jesus. Yes, we have been with Jesus. But that will be just a testimony in words. But their testimony of Jesus was, they demonstrated, and because Jesus is real, his resurrection is real, bring the sick man over here. In Jesus' name be healed. That was how they demonstrated their great power. Not just in words, but they actually bring forth power. The same power that our Lord Jesus has, that is delegated and given to them, his resurrection power. This is the way the gospel must always be. And we need to renew our mind to accept this understanding that is in our Bible. Some more verses. And um, says, when they appointed the seven deacons, it says in verse 8, And Stephen, full of faith and dunamis of power, did great wonders and signs among the people. So here we have again and again in the story of the book of Acts that this is a standard for the church in the whole world in the New Testament time. Throughout 2000 years of history, even though we did not make the mark, and today in this end time, that standard has not changed. But as we realize it in this end time after so much theology and we went into the dark ages where we even lost the concept of salvation by grace there is a revival again through Martin Luther and many others like him in his time some we did not hear of because the seven or all are orders because they were martyred but through time we understand the salvation by grace but we need to progress on salvation by grace into salvation by grace and power and then we will have the same theology as they had in the new testament plus more because we are in this end time that god by his grace is reviving us to understand again the pure concept of what the church must be and what the gospel of Jesus Christ must be and what it entails signs and wonders and uh, <clears throat> even in their summary of the life of Jesus and the preaching Peter make mention of this in verse 38 of Acts 10 when he confronted him by the Gentiles, say how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with his Holy Spirit and with power, who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. Is God with you 
when you preach for when you speak for his word God with you will demonstrate his presence and that is the standard of the gospel that we must maintain even our Lord Jesus Christ when he prepared himself to go forth it says here in Luke 4 verse 14 that after the temptation it says in verse 14 then Jesus will return from the wilderness in the power of the Holy Spirit to Galilee and news of him went out throughout all the surrounding region and he taught in the synagogues being glorified by all of course we know Jesus taught with signs and wonders and he seems to expect that and uh, even when when the people hear him in verse 36 they make this command says verse 36 of uh, Luke 4 then they were all amazed and spoke among themselves saying what a word this is not just his words is glorious and powerful because a word of Jesus who can compare but it says with authority and power they not only hear the word they saw the authority he has over the wind the waves nature and everything around him plus power he can command unclean spirits and sickness and disease too of course and everything left because we live in a world that is fallen Jesus when he came demonstrated the unfallen power of the Adamic race because he's the second man the last Adam he demonstrated power over the waves the wind atoms and molecule nature around him and of course over signal disease that is the true gospel that man is restored back to the position in God that mankind is supposed to be the world when he speak things happen and the laws of nature obey his words the gospel must always be accompanied by signs and wonders here's an incident in Luke 5 verse uh, 17 it says that it happened in verse 17 on a certain day as he was teaching that there were Pharisees and teachers of the law sitting by who had come out of every town of Galilee, Judea and Jerusalem and the power of the Lord was present to heal them and there behold men brought on a bed a man who was paralyzed why did they do it? because they expect Jesus wherever there is Jesus there is signs and wonders wherever Jesus there is potential for healing so they brought a sick paralyzed man whom they sought to bring in lay before him they could not find a way so they went to a rooftop and they dig a hole and then it says they let him down in verse 19 with the bay through the tiling into the midst before everyone saw the man coming down Jesus was in the midst of preaching with words and then when he saw it he began to demonstrate power he says man your sins are forgiven you and on the scrap say who, who can forgive sins how how can no no human can do that we are all sinful Jesus is not his power was sins and then Jesus perceived their thoughts in verse 22 and say why are you reasoning in your hearts which is easier to say your sins are forgiven not to say rise up and walk but that you may know see what's the reason why power is demonstrate demonstrated that you may know the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins then he did the signs and wonders I say to you arise take up your bed and go to your house instantly the man was healed now you know the purpose for the power the purpose for the power is to demonstrate the concept of forgiveness of sins which is a concept who can see forgiveness of sins of course in the spirit you can see but in the natural who can see so how can people believe that you can uh, know you're safe from hell you when you haven't died you're safe from death you're safe from sin how can people believe that because those haven't happened yet and even if, if it happened they cannot see it yet because you know who knows what happens after them unless you go there but Jesus signs and wonders is to demonstrate 
that the concept of salvation from death, from Hades and from sins unto God, He will demonstrate His power right now. Rise and be healed. Rise and be healed in the name of Jesus. And that healing, the demonstration of His power over nature signs, with signs and wonders, assures you that your faith stands in the power of God that definitely without a question he has saved you from hell from sins from death is to demonstrate that that the son of man truly has power to forgive sins so you see the purposes of why the gospel must be presented that way and not just asking people to believe a concept or philosophy um, <clears throat> that is the power and and notice this when jesus himself wanted to send the disciples to give the word the message to the people what did jesus do the first thing he did was to anoint them with power so that they can go with power Jesus never intended, never wanted any of his disciples, much less us today in this end time, to go out with a power to demonstrate the message. So the Bible tells us here in Luke 9 verse 1, which happened in Matthew 10 verse 1, when he wanted to send them out, says then he called his 12 disciples together and gave them power and dunamis that is dunamis and authority exousia over all demons and to cure all diseases then he sent them out to preach the kingdom of god the gospel is actually the kingdom of god the kingdom of god and god and to heal the sick can you see that he sent them to heal the sick they need power jesus is never when God sent him, God sent him signs and wonders. When he sent his disciples, he sent his disciples to he ensure they understand and they have the power and authority to go and demonstrate it. So if he has done that in the Bible, do you think today, what Jesus is saying yesterday to a day and forever, that Jesus today will send you out with a power? Never. In fact, the Bible tells us, even if it never mentioned about signs and wonders, when he sent his disciples out all over again, in uh, after his uh, just before his ascension, he says in Matthew twenty-eight verse nineteen um, and twenty. He says, Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things if I have commanded you. See the standard is not as humans commanded, as traditional church commanded, as tradition that passed on to us by a history of weak churches and weak gospel, but all things that I have commanded. What was Jesus' standard? That he was sent us out with power, signs and wonders. He says, and lo, I am with you even unto the end of the age. Now, we only read from verse 19, right? I purposely do that. Because actually it didn't start with verse 19. Many people think the Great Commission starts with verse 19. No, it starts with verse 18. Where Jesus says, All authority and power has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Now I send you with the same authority and power. That is the Gospel. And of course, you all know the Gospel of Luke. Chapter 16. Uh, not, not Luke, Mark chapter 16, sorry. And of the Luke chapter 24 tells us, don't go out, don't go out with power until you have power to go out. All the same theme in Mark 16, it says here, after he appeared to them, where some did not believe in his resurrection. And then he says in verse 15, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved and he who does not believe will be condemned. 
do and these signs will follow those who believe you got to believe that they will follow the preaching of the gospel in my name they will cast out demons they will speak with new tongues they will take up serpents and they drink anything deadly of course it's not talking about purposely going for but should they happen to you it won't harm you because you're above the natural laws it will by no means hurt you they will lay hands on the sick and, uh, and they will recover it's expected that power will go forth with those whom he sent and even Luke tells us here in Luke chapter 24 he tells them uh, in a reverse measure he tells them you know he's telling them don't don't leave Jerusalem he says uh, in verse 49 behold I send the promise of my father upon you and you know this story continues in book Acts 1 I send the promise of my father to you which is your Holy Spirit but tarry tarry don't wait don't, don't leave wait wait in the city of Jerusalem until you endure or cloth with power from on high then go which we see in Acts chapter 1 they waited 10 days and they prayed the Holy Spirit came upon them they spoke with signs and wonders they spoke with signs and then uh, power came upon their lives so we realize here that there is power now the power can work in different ways in the time of Charles, Charles G. Finney who is in the second great awakening he, he understood the concept of power as a power conviction so that when he go there's a power that convict people and bring them to their knees the power of God's presence a holiness to convict people of their sin that is included but we need to increase that because that was his, his understanding whatever you understand from the Bible that you receive he saw the power of conviction of sin and that is a power but he did not see the power of healing the sick casting out devils but today we see it it's in the bible and the, the healing gospel began to come forth towards uh, the towards uh, uh, 19 uh, and the 20th century as uh, the healing way before the year you know be, be, before the year 2000 there were uh, a move into healing and into holiness uh, before the outpouring of the Holy Spirit and so in the 19th century the end of the 19th century the gospel healing began to come forth and we're going to see so what we see we can receive and that's what God's one may the Lord bless you with this fresh understanding of who you are in Christ today and the power that is inherent in you and the power inherent in the gospel we continue this series again next sermon god bless you and may his power and presence be upon your life in jesus name amen